Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Stock Talk on July 2nd. It is 5.51 p.m. Eastern Time. Just a friendly reminder that tomorrow is a half day. The markets will close at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. And then on July 4th, the markets will be closed all day. So just be on the lookout for that. In the meantime, let's talk about SPY and general market movement on the one-year chart. This tracks an S&P 500. I like general markets tackling this first, as you guys know, because... If you're in stocks, chances are, if you're the blue chip stocks, the big stocks, you know, those generally follow the markets. So uh, taking a look at the one year chart here is SPY. I modified a couple of lines. You guys can see that uh, this red line is the um, lower high line uh, that we've been making. And that right now I have this support around 269.50. And this is a new support line that we kind of put up just today. This is just to optimize. Of course, we get new information. We have to be objective about the information. And the market's telling us that we have a support at this line. And therefore, that one's in. Um, so what are we seeing right now? Note that in last video, we talked about the potential for the markets to push lower. The question is, and the answer is, did we push lower today? We certainly did. We push lower. And you guys can see that markets push back to the support 269.44 before we rebounded back higher. So we did push lower, but we managed to recover intraday. Now, how do we trade this pattern? So one thing to note is because tomorrow is a half day, right? We have to take that with a grain of salt. Every market movement that's happening right now, it doesn't have to tell us a big story. And in fact, it doesn't tell us where the markets will go pushing higher or lower, which is why we have to look at intraday patterns, whether there's a reversal to the upside or downside, and where the market closes at. Those two factors will tell us a more definitive story. For now, we're stuck between a horizontal pattern between the support at 269.50 and the resistance at 274. That's it. So what are the patterns that I'm looking for? In order for me, short-term bullish, once again, for the markets, I need a close above 274.15 around that general area. Any daily close above that area will uh, signal a short-term reversal back to the upside. However, if we manage to close lower, below 269, that is a signal of a weakness in the market, and I expect 266.40 to function as the next support. So that's what I'm looking for, and that's how I'm trading. Am I trading in the markets right now? I'm not, right? But that's just my opinion. Of course, I'm just telling you guys what I'm doing. By no means does that mean that you guys have to do the same thing. Um, but because we're kind of stuck in this horizontal pattern of a little bit uncertainty before a holiday, um, you know, in the midweek, I'm perfectly fine being out of the markets until we have a more definitive answer. DTBIX, tracking volatility. We're looking at a one minute chart right now and look at volatility. We expected a volatility spike and we did get that spike. Look, we spiked to $59 earlier this morning. We managed to do a double peak and then you guys can see that, right? So if you guys are in what volatility, one thing to note is you guys see how many peaks we got over here, confirmations that this was the peak. One, two, three, four, five, almost five confirmations. Those should be your signs that if you're in volatility, you should be exiting at that point. You've gained, if you were in Friday, you've gained all this percentage points. There's little, you know, there's not much reason to take that risk given that we've made this these many tops to continue holding it. So um, after we formed these tops, you see that market did recover and we saw volatility pretty much closing where we closed on Friday. So where do I see TVIX going? Well, volatility kind of follows the markets, right? And because vol uh, markets are moving this horizontal pattern, volatility is moving this horizontal pattern, and it's just too unpredict unpredictable at this moment, and this is not something I'm actively participating in right now as well. All right, so let's take a look at commodities, for slash CL, tracking crude oil features. And um, I want to show you guys, and read one of your comments right now, because one of your comments was Dowie. Hi, Kevin. Thanks for your post. I went into DWT on Friday. Should I sell it immediately today or wait for oil to hit 76.50 and then rejoin? So the one thing is, um, of course, uh, I'm not an advisor, right? I'm just kind of an educator for you guys. So I can't tell you guys what to do. However, I can tell you the patterns that I'm seeing. And the pattern that I'm seeing is around 76.40, like you said, 76.50 is the resistance. So what, we just have to be a little more objective with our information given that crude oil, what's been happening? 
it's been continually pushing higher. What did we do in the first four hours of this candle? You guys didn't see this candle, and this was a candle made actually when uh, futures opened uh, on Sunday, right? Yesterday. We managed to retest the 20 EMA and bounce straight up, showing what? Showing strength in crude oil. So, um, you know, DWT can't be a move, can't be a play until we see a confirmation of a reversal. We do not see a confirmation of a reversal, and therefore, in my opinion, we have to be pro UWT, pro crude oil, pro gush. So, taking a look at, um, uh, looking at the 10 year chart, right? You guys can see that this will function as a very strong resistance doesn't have to be exactly 7650 it can be a little lower can be a couple dollars higher doesn't matter but at this area is where i'm looking for um a reversal back to the downside so um yeah let's take a look at four slash ng tracking uh here's here's four slash ng tracking natural gas right so on the 180 day chart we saw natural gas what happened it collapsed below the support. So where was your stop loss? Well, in this case, your stop loss should have been somewhere around here, right? Even around here, if you wanted to minimize losses. Note that we've been making higher lows and all of a sudden we collapsed down here. So even if you entered here, one, there was no sign of a reversal, right? And you might be thinking like, Kevin, like what do you mean a sign of reversal? Like how do I know that you guys can see that this candle managed to push up higher, but then it dropped. Once that candle has stopped forming and we're done with that four hours, that's your signal that we've broken below the support. And that's when you should have exited. So if you didn't, um, of course, you know, then, you know, you know where to exit because right now we're on the way back down. We've broken a major support. We've broken this major trend line. And therefore, um, you know, DGAZ is now a great play. So um, that's that's pretty much it. So one thing to note is UGAZ finally has broken uh, it's uh, strength and I'm looking for DGAZ to be pro um, in breaking this resistance, $24. So right now it closed at 23.96 and I'm looking for DGAZ to start reversing back to the upside if we manage to close over $24. So if we close at the resistance right now, so if we manage to close higher, I'm looking for higher prices in DGAZ. Just because, you know, we kind of consolidated here for a long time and the energy is ready for that push upward if uh, inverse natural gas wants to do so. So DGAZ is the ticker for that. So be on the lookout for that in the near future. It's okay if you didn't catch that 6% today. All right, taking a look at 4 slash GC tracking gold futures. Right, okay. So I don't have to say much. Just look at the chart, look at the lines. The next support is 1210, all right? So gold, I mean, what can you say? There's, it's just, there's no stop to this. And so JDST has to be the play, right? Because JDST goes inverse gold. So you guys can see that we're continuously moving lower, 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 lower. This is the next support until then. I'm not looking for entries into JNUG, but I am looking for a pattern reversal somewhere at some support. Right now, nothing's functioning as a support and I'm not entering whatsoever. So, all right, let's take a look at a couple of your tickers. Trader Princess, I know which ticker you're gonna talk about, right? It's MU. So, all right. All right, MU, is MU making a reversal? I was expecting it to hit $50 before a bounce, but it didn't. Yeah, so fifty dollars would have been a good number, right? If you guys were looking at, if you were looking at fifty dollars, here it was, but it didn't. It managed to push here. So, um, you know, this this is one where uh, if you found that, let me just take a look. Okay, yeah, if you found that low, right, hit fifty one thirty two and started reversing, you guys can see that this massive intraday reversal back to the upside. That's your signal to kind of go in because it's reversing past this previous resistance area. You you guys you could have gotten at any point here. Um, so let's take a look at the 180 day chart. Yep, so you guys can see. So one thing to note is look how, look at MU right here, right? We were nearing the bottom, managed to push higher, but what? We still managed to collapse back to its support, okay? We managed to push higher. There's a potential for it to come back to the support, back to $50 and change where you were looking for your entry point. So a couple of things to note is 
One, you can play on the down. When it starts coming down again, you can buy in at that area. That's one potential possibility. Um, but another area is if you miss this upside, um, I, I don't know. I mean, this is up to you. What's your risk to reward ratio? At which point are you th- gonna, you know, make that decision that saying, hey, you know, I'm gonna cut my losses, right? And that's for you to decide because if you get in right now, you might be risking a nine percent loss. Are you able to risk that? That's the question for you to answer. But for now, um, yes, we do see a small pop right here, but I'm just saying that there's still a potential for it to go a little lower. Um, all right, Tango Tango NXPI. Uh, do you see more? downside in NXPI. So Tango Tango, check your keyboard in a moment because I think you managed to type everything, maybe left a key or down a key. So (laughs) NXPI. So NXPI on the 180-day chart has been showing us constant downtrend. And um, even though we gapped up here, we're on the low side and right, this is a constant downtrend, lower highs being edged in by, um, what's the volume? Yeah, so being edged in on, um, it's really low volume, okay. So yeah, on the 180 day chart, we're being edged by the 20 year mail line, right? And it's continuously moving lower. So I expect lower prices to come. A support is around, um, this is not a very strong support, but there might be a little support around here. 104, 105. And then of course, um, this, this doesn't look really nice. Yeah, that would be a small support here. Yeah, I just don't really like this pattern. This is a declining pattern. You guys can see that it's coming back down. So, um, yeah, I don't, yeah, look at this massive drop, kind of a spike back up. Yeah, this one is a little too volatile. What is that spike? Yeah, it's a little too much. All right. So, yeah, I would not look for an entry right now, uh, given NXPI's um, market movement. Uh, do you think of Tesla and Outlook this week? Oh, look at Tesla. Yeah, this is a good one to watch, actually. Um, so Tesla, we're looking at the three-year chart and a weekly candle. And Tesla managed to push to 360, over 360 during pre-market, but got heavily rejected at this area. So what am I looking for? I'm not looking for entry into Tesla right now, right? Uh, we First thing is we want it to hold the support. Is it holding the support on the three-year chart? It is managing to hold the support area, right? Around 330, and that is the support area. But I'm looking for a reversal back up. Let's look at the one-year chart, and you guys can see this. What is happening here, right? We're holding the 20 EMA line, but I'm looking for another bounce up. One thing that's concerning is this lower high trajectory that we're making right now. Sure, this could be another bull flag formation, the short-term bull flag in the making, but I need some more evidence, need some more um, data here before I look for an entry into Tesla. Um, So I, yeah, so just wait on this one, I think. Wait on this one a little bit, but should we have that pop above that 20 EMA line again? That could be an entry point into Tesla. Bugularello, what do you think of SC? All right, Tish, here you go. So here's SC. Uh, we're looking at the one-year chart and wow, gap up. Here we go. Found the support again, and we're moving higher. Okay, let's look at the 180-day chart. Hmm, this is another one that's a little less predictable, and the reason why I don't like this is I'm looking at the three-year chart. Let's take a look at the 10-year chart. Uh, okay. Yeah, you guys can see where the resistance is, right? Oh my. So let me box in the resistance for you and right this area should function as the resistance so note that we're nearing really close to the resistance we're near the breakdown area and hence even though we might be on the short term trend up on a weekly basis on the long term if you're holding it let's say to a um, couple months that might not look as good for you. But maybe short term is okay. There's a little more potential, but just be cautious as we near that boxed area. Natural gas looking bearish on weekly charts. Lucas, what do you think of D-gas? Yep, so I just told you about D-gas, right? D-gas looks like it has potential. Um, Addy boy, do you think PG is ready to break out? This is the last ticker I'm tackling, guys. So PG is looking to break out. So we're back at the 20. 
is Procter and Gamble. Oh, okay. Yeah, so this is a pretty decent pattern to play. Very nice pattern. I like it how this has been actively acting as a support. We're looking at the weekly chart and now we're moving higher. This is one, if you wanted to take a position, you know your entry point near the support, your exit point is near the resistance. Um, this is a good one to look into. Certainly, great job, Addy Boy. And uh, does it look like it's ready to break out? I mean, sure, we got that support confirmed again. And, um, you know, so that is just something for you guys to uh, think whether if you're willing to take that risk of going in. But certainly, I do like this pattern. All right, that's it for all the tickers today. Uh, if I didn't get to your ticker, and I'm sorry because this video is really long already, uh, please just submit the ticker again in the video in the comments below. Um, thank you so much for watching this video as always, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Um, you know, after the half day, we'll see what happens, but uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow for another Stock Talk.